There it is. Gonna walk in here right quick. See what Mr. Ben Mears has got in his shop in here. Y'all got some good deer hunting over around y'all? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, out there in Bankhead Forest, we've got uh, that northern strains, some yeah. Missouri deer or uh, Michigan. Michigan yeah. deer were brought in back in the 20s. And uh, I don't know if you saw it deer that Michael Perry killed. This past year is our new state record muzzleloader buck is 196. Is that right? He killed it. It was about 20 minutes from my house. Well, I don't know. We don't yeah. have genetics here like that. There was a 188 killed. A guy named Scott Terry killed a 188 uh, this year yeah. out of there with a rifle. Hmm. Yeah, Let's this, take a look, this at some look your, all you want to. Your stuff right here. That's where he's working on his new molds. Sculpting up, getting his uprights ready. Get some new sizes on some upright turns and some upright straights, which I'm excited about because I don't like doing upright straights, <laughs> but but I love the look of these. If I'm gonna do one, that's what I would like to have. That's just cool seeing it before it's yeah before it's done yeah, a lot up. Of people don't ever get to see them in the clay. Right, right, yeah. So it's man, it's a pretty mount. Y'all check that out. That is sharp. What'd you say your name was again? Cole. Cole. Cole Mears. Yep. Cole Mears. This is the son of Mr. Ben Mears. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Europeans and the whole bit and do this too. Right, you're doing about 35 a year is what you was doing, about, and sculpting. That's about my number. I mean, we, we charge a little more, you know, than everybody else. I don't know, we just, that's kind of my number, 35, 40 maybe. Right, right. So I told Cole if he wanted the deer, I'm going to let you have them. I'm not doing it. That was last year. So that's right. When he took over the deer, where I didn't have to stop this, I mean, you know how it is. You don't know who's coming and you're working on something. Here comes three or more deer, you're going to stop the cape out. Yep. Oh, I just... Yeah, I got 14 the other day in one day. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, when half of them's thawed, half of them's frozen. Yeah. So <laughs> I get one of these lines started, and you know, you get them out there, you got about half of them done, people go to use them, and then first thing you know, they need uh, 23 or 24. And Five new sizes. Six <laughs> weeks away from that, you know. That's right. And I understand that, man. Well, I'm glad you're making them. Look at the show run. Man, at the stuff. About <laughs> running out of room, ain't you? <laughs> yeah, I wish these guys come get these turkeys. The turkeys take up a lot of room. Yep. Big old bird. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That right there's a cool looking mount. Man, that's pretty. We had some better light in there. Oh, that's all right. It ain't no different than my shop. My shop is so dark, I can't really work. I had to put an LED light above my table the other day. <laughs> Everything I got is fluorescent still. You got good turkey hunting over around your house, too? There's not a whole lot of turkeys in North Alabama. There's a few out in, uh, out in Bankhead Forest, there's some yep. spots out there that's got a pretty good many turkeys. And we do, when you get into Central Alabama and South Alabama, yeah. they're everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I've got some land 
several pieces of land myself leased and stuff. But this is, I've got just four turkeys, basically. Yeah. That's what I'm ready for. I yeah. love deer hunting, but by this time of the year, I start itching, getting ready to <laughs> do something yeah, different. Yeah, we love it too. We, we have uh, our place. We've got a place here, family farm, and we got a lot of deer. We ain't got big deer. Right. And uh, all my timber has got in a stage where we don't have a lot of cover anymore. I mean, we it's too big. Has got, yeah. You know, you can walk in there now. Right. And our deer population's kind of down. I've been doing a lot of control burning. Right. And uh, trapping. Right. I bet this is my third year trapping, and we went from just about just a few turkeys to a plenty of turkeys. I've, I've heard there's been a lot of people in Alabama got into trapping the last it's several unbelievable, years. Unbelievable. Like yeah, it has been huge, and, and with the with the cell cameras now too, like so, so many yeah. people are running cell cameras. Yeah. You don't realize how many predators are eating turkeys you really deer don't. until you start getting all the cameras in the woods and they're tearing the population to pieces. It, it's on. I've caught probably five or six hundred raccoons wow. off of about a thousand acres. Well, I, there's been a few guys that I've seen on Facebook over there in the forest and stuff that's been putting cameras on turkey nests and yep. you know when they yep. when they lay and they'll sit there and every egg in the whole nest will get eaten raw. Yep. You know, it's it's really hard to watch. <laughs> yeah it yeah. is. Yeah, I've caught uh, 30 coyotes this year. Wow. I didn't even know we had 30 coyotes. Well, I mean, I know you we see, had coyotes. Yeah, you see one or two here or there and think you may have five. <laughs> yeah. i got a buddy that's a retired game warden, and he's been a trapper all of his life. He's a little older than me, and uh, I think the most he ever caught was 141 in one year, and he sells them to the live market. You know, they put them in these big fox pens, you know, and they run the hounds and right. And he sells a fox and red fox, gray fox, and coyotes. And uh, I never thought I'd get into trapping until I got studying about, you know, I said, that's got to be what's the going on with our turkeys. Yep. We don't ever hardly, I mean, you might see a hen with some little ones, you know, one a year or something. That's right. And I said, I'm going to try that. So I bought traps and uh, I told him, I said, I want to learn how to catch them coyotes. We could hear them holler, you know, back in the night. I went with him, I don't know, last winter, I don't know, we probably went 25, 30 mornings, you know, running traps. He showed me just how to do it and what I needed in the whole bit. I kind of got started on it. And there's really not a lot to it after you see somebody that knows how, just like yeah. anything else. Right. And I wound up catching 30 in a year. And uh, it's unbelievable, the turkey hatch we had. Is that off one property? Yeah. Well, now, one of them didn't join it. Right. I had another, uh, well, two of them actually. And I had a 80 acres in another spot, and then I had a, a little 25 acre track. It didn't join me, but it was in some big land, you know. Right. And uh, the hatch that we had this year, uh, we know we had a hundred babies survive. Uh, Hunter, my youngest son, lives over here, and, and we kind of counted up I mean there's three hens had 40 with them in that bunch and then I had a, I had three or four more places that I was seeing that many yeah. you know right uh, and I went yesterday and hunting a little while last two hours and I heard turkeys flying up all evening long <laughs> chills on <laughs> get you ready for more <laughs> people really don't realize how many raccoons and possums they are in the woods right and I'm using a conibar trap a beaver trap in a five gallon bucket with dog food in it and that is the most deadly setup for them i mean i don't have to run them every day these little dog proof traps you know they'll get they'll get out of them if you don't run them that's right but these kind of bars they're dead right i mean it instantly kills them and i might not run them in the summer i don't run them once a week right and uh, it's got down now where i just rarely catch one i mean that's but now it took about two years and I've got 36 conibars running. And, and that's around feeders. Right. And uh, it's, it's amazing. I didn't realize how many raccoons there were until we started when they made feeding legal in Alabama. Yeah. You know, you put out you put out a feeder and you're thinking, I can't wait to see what kind of deal we got on here. The first 30 pictures of 10 raccoons. Yeah. They're crawling all over, that's hanging right. from it. It's like, where in the world do you right. come from? You don't really see them in the woods. Y'all come home. through full on there at the waterway. They cross the waterway bridge. I got an 80 acre track just north of that, about uh, about two miles. It's just right out of the city limits of Fulham. 
and I, I feed over. I've got feeders to run all summer, and I, I don't know, it's been like three years ago, I could not keep feed out over, and I wasn't even running cameras. Right. And uh, coons, um, I went to running cameras, and I've never seen as many raccoons in my life. I said, they even know the deer are. <laughs> I guarantee they were. Well, I took, uh, I said I took five of them buckets over, and I quit keeping up. I've caught around 70 around that feeder. 70 coons. One feeder. And one feeder. And I've had feed over right now two weeks. Uh, and and that's still feed there. And that, I mean, I've got my cameras on. I know I'll, I'll get a picture of a coon and I'll go over and he'll be in the trout. <laughs> but I've caught him down that hard. Yeah, really. That's crazy. It, but that is. And that's the way to get rid of them, too, around them feeders. I mean, perfect. they come in that corn. Yep. You got it year round. Or right. I try to keep out some scratch for the turkeys. And, right. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about what it's really going to do in the next two or three years. Yeah. One, just one year. Yeah. Uh, we've got Jake's. I don't know how many we've got. Right. And it's, it's something. That's exciting. Cause they, I mean, you used to, nobody really did a whole lot of management for turkeys. You no. just had them where you did. And people, I don't think people understood what was happening to them. That's right. And I actually believe that's what's happened to our quail. Oh, yeah, we absolutely. Used to have a lot of quail. Well, used to, there was so much more big timber, and everybody got to logging and stuff. And once you once you clear cut, and then that mess grows back and plant pines or whatever, then you bring in the predators. Yeah. Excuse me. But these places around here that have a test just like it was when I was a kid, right. there's no quail. Right, they're just gone. So, they just got to eat habitat. Up. That's right. So it's got to be predators. Yeah, I mean, predators any kind of ground nest in the herd, turkey or quail, or if you got that many running around, it's just about a miracle that one raises a clutch. One makes you know? it, yep. But uh, yeah, it's. I about got to where I drove a cow trout and I had to hunt and I run out of cows. Yep. <laughs> uh, I trout all summer. You know, we can leave any trout in the summer here. Yeah. Any kind of fox or bobcat or whatever, we can trap all summer. Right. They hard to catch in the summer. Yeah. But I did catch, I don't know, I think I caught eight this summer when it was so hot. But uh, you can catch them. I just like a dog. I mean, right. Uh, it's pretty interesting the sense and how to say it. And yeah, there's a guy named Jared James Smith. I don't know if you ever heard of him. He's a he's a trapper. He's a big time turkey hunter. He he limits out almost every year on turkeys in Alabama. But he if he ain't turkey hunting, he's trapping. That's yep. all he does the rest of the whole year. Yep. He's about as good a trapper. He just knows. Right. He knows these little secrets and these tricks, and right. he can catch just about anything. But even his yeah. little boy, they do it all year long. Yeah. Uh, he traps a lot of stuff. There's a lot. He does some seminars and stuff in Alabama on how to Is that right? set for certain animals yeah. and stuff. That's catching on here. There's a lot of these younger guys starting out, and that, that's that is the answer to the turkey hunting. I yep. mean, it's if we don't. They ain't gonna be none. Right. Uh, I decided that it's, oh, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Somebody put something on Facebook. I didn't even know the guy last night. He's showing a big drove of turkeys. He's saying that they might see just a few turkeys until the trap, and, and I commented on it. And there's a people are realizing that now. Right. What that's doing. But that's what you know. Uh, turkey populations down nationwide. Right. And there ain't no doubt that's what it is. We used yeah. to hunt Missouri. We hunted Missouri for 25 years, and that wasn't a better place in the world to go turkey hunting. And it, we seen it just falling off every year. Right. And raccoons, you can see them in the daylight hours. You know, yeah. They live for <laughs> just, just piles and up. I don't know why they went from, you know. Well, I wonder, you know, a lot of it is because used two people would do fur trapping. Yeah. You know, if you think yeah, about it. That's right. You know, back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, yeah. people were selling furs. So yeah. there was a lot of coon hunters. Yeah. There was a lot of, of dog hunters that hunted coats yeah. and foxes, stuff like that. Yeah. And then they kind of quit doing that. And then you also had this giant, it's like it flipped over and all the kids started turkey hunting. Yeah. Turkey hunting's more popular now than it's ever been. Oh, yeah. You know, so you've got more people hunting turkeys yeah. and nobody hunting predators. Right. You know, so, I mean, because hunters, it'd be hard to kill off a turkey population with, with turkey hunters. Yeah. But you add that to, right. to no predator trapping or killing. That's right. And I think that is just kind of a perfect storm, you know. For, yeah, and this younger generation, they don't get out and trap and stuff like we did. Or, right. Or, 
or any hunt. Well, a lot of times that's not even a thing. I mean, people don't even squirrel hunt anymore. That's right. You know, used to people that hunted small game, a lot of them coon hunted at yeah. night in the summer and stuff. Yeah. You know, they were just hunters. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, people won't let you on their property no more. A lot of the coon hunters and stuff, they'd go from property to property. They just, right. they just coon hunted. People didn't mind, you know. But now, you got so many big landowners that won't let you on their property. That's right. And they're just growing predators. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I saw when I got started on the coyotes, there was some statistics <clears throat> that they had done on the coyote. Uh, an average female will catch nine fawns in a fawning season. Now, that's a lot. I had no fawns. idea. Yeah, uh, that's a lot. Actually, my game warden buddy had a buddy. They he's got trapping buddies all over the United States, and they talk, you know, back and forth. Well, they they found a coyote then one of them did, and he put a game camera on it, and sure enough, there was nine. That jilt brought nine fawns to that during the fawning wow. season. That one den. Yeah. And you take 30 of them on a thousand acres, now that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of deer, yeah. I decided, because we, we kill a few does, just, you know, because one time we had a lot of deer. And we eat them, so we kill, you know, 10, 12, 15. Right. Not enough to, you know, well, we're seeing less, less. I said, now some, there ain't nobody around here killing them does. I mean, people don't kill a doe no more. They just kill yep. a small year and a half old bucks that had a doe. That's right. And I said, there's something going to these fawns, and it, and ain't no doubt it was in cows. Yep. Yep. You got 30 on And they're them. killing that many fawns yep. a piece. Yep. You know, I mean, that's crazy. I never heard that before. And they claim in the south, because we have a, a longer spread out rut, they harder on them here than they are in the northern state right. because they have a wind up fur of like two weeks. Up here, they can eat them half a year. Right. I mean, you, <laughs> they'd liable to be born here three month period. That's right. And they claim in some places up to 70% is what they catch. 70% of your fawns. And most of the average in the northern states was like 30% because right. it was such a short window there that they had the opportunity to get them. Right. Well, well it's well, all pretty interesting. I, I hadn't had no, I mean, it's, it's, my trapping buddy, he he told me when he lo he knows all. I didn't know anything about it. He said, "Ain't no way to catch them all." What? He said, "You know, I'll catch four or five at a place." But what he's doing every year, cause he's selling, he'd catch four or five at a place or two or three, and he'd move somewhere else. What? He wouldn't just stay in after him like I did. I said, "No, I don't know about that, my James." I said, "I believe you can catch or kill out anything if you stay on it hard enough." Right. Well, well the ones that the are left of, will leave because they got to breed and everything right. else. Right. Well, end of the year. It got to where I had 29 traps out, and I hadn't caught nothing in two months. He said, "You know, you may be right." A lot better than this. A lot better than you started. I can't show you a track. I right. can't show you one track. And where we caught so many over here, we took all of our deer scraps mm -hmm. over there last year and put out for bait. Mm -hmm. And that's where we caught. I think we caught 14 on like a little two-acre block where we built a lake. And got the dirt for the levee. It was kind of a little, we call it the dirt pit. Right. Nothing grow there, just old sorry soil. But that was kind of a meeting place for them coyotes in the middle of our place. I mean, it'll eventually show up at that place, especially with all that beaver carcasses and right. deep trout beavers, and we'd stake them down and and what deer carcasses we had left that we dressed, we'd pile it up and it was just drawing them. You could smell that for miles. That's right. Yeah. And uh, he said, and then he trapped, he trapped 20 mile bottom, which is about two miles from that. And he didn't catch hardly any coyotes this year. He said, you know, I believe you've caught all them coyotes. He <laughs> said, I didn't catch nothing. There ain't no sign of coyotes. He said, that was the same bunch of coyotes because they claim they got a six mile average of a six mile area that they really? hunt. That's yeah. a big area. That is, that is a big area. So if you can find that core like said, area. They smell so far off. I mean, if you've got some bait out there, yeah. I mean, you probably did. You probably killed most of the coyotes in that six mile area. Yeah. That's why I'll come to that one spot. Well, I'm sure there'll be some more show up, but it ain't saturated with them like it was, that's for sure. But Well, maybe it'll get their reputation for a place of danger instead of a place to come eat. Yeah. <laughs> if they know that place is bad news, maybe they'll go somewhere else. That's kind of... I kind of, after I got started, I kind of was sad after I run out of cows because it's kind of exciting to go every morning <laughs> and see if you got something. It's That's right. Like, 
front of the shot line or yeah or whatever you know that's right you'll see what you call it we call it double one morning i started a little 25 acre track i had down here and it i don't guess it ever been trout had a camera on and got a cow on that every i mean i was trapping in them buckets mm -hmm. and them possums and them cows was a, eating them possums I said, I'm going to hunt a cow trap at in October. October to me is the best time to catch them. And I went down there and set, I like to say, six traps. In total, I caught 12, 12 cows. And uh, when I first got started on them, I catch one first. I caught one first, first night. Second night, I went down there and had a double. I had one set here and had one just right down the road. You could see both of them in the trap. And I pulled up and there's both jumping in the trap. Huh. That's exciting. Right. Yeah, that's right. I just kept a hammering them just every morning. I think I was down there like 12 mornings. And it got to where it got slow, slow, slow. I caught a bunch of young ones, a jilt. And my trapping buddy, he said, well, usually the old jilt is the hardest one to catch. I said, well, I done caught her. And we had caught the big male, usually a big male. And he was the last one I caught. Went there one morning, had him. I caught three in the same trout. And had him, and I said, I, and I left my traps about another five days, never caught another one. And he said, well, you pretty much cleaned them out. Right. But, uh, that's great. It is. I need to start doing that. Something I never tried. <clears throat> I need to get into it. There's a lot of work in it. Yeah. Getting your traps dyed and waxed and, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting, though. It's real interesting. To me, uh, after deer season, well, I've got some buddies just begging me to come trap their place, which I, you know, ain't no money in it. Which my buddy, I give all of them. I say, I ain't in the cow business. You can have every one of them. You teach me how to catch them. I'm gonna bring them. That's in, right. You know, you know. <laughs> exactly. But he gets like fifty dollars for one of them. You know? Really? He'll have twelve or fifteen at a time in a trailer. Right. Uh, the guy he deals with, he'll take every one he can catch, and he'll just bring them in for your trailer. And, He'll put it in his barn, and when he fills it up again, they'll come get it. Right. Well, he makes a lot of money at it, but it's just kind of a retired fella that enjoys it anyway. Kind of, they all ain't no money in it much, but. Right, something to kill the time and save the turkeys. That's what I wish the state would do. If they'd put a bounty on some of that stuff where people could give them kind of an yep. incentive, they could improve Our hunting club did that several years ago, made it to where it was, started paying me $10 per predator yeah <laughs> people started shooting them then yeah. <laughs> instead of passing them up waiting on deer they were killing all of them <laughs> yeah they do pretty good with them buckets and even ten dollars ain't no telling how many uh, possums and coons that i have caught it, it's just unbelievable like when it, when it was so many every trap had one in it right every time you run it well i mean we're getting pictures of Raccoons and possums on game cameras over scrapes. There's not even any food. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. you got predators walking around everywhere. Uh, yeah. They're curious about all that. Any scent. kind of scent. Yeah. yeah. Anything. Yeah, that coon's mad and dig up your cow sets, and a possum, even worse. Yeah. They'll dig them up. But yeah, it's a pretty interesting. Well, what do we need to do to get these? I don't want to mess you up all day long. Them women will take care of y'all there and here. Just go in this door, uh, go right through there and take a right, and they all in there. And, uh, they'll open that door if you want to load you up or whatever. Okay. They'll take care of you. Fantastic. Well, man, if we you. don't see you again before we yep. leave, yep. Yeah, nice you. to meet you. Nice to meet y'all. I appreciate you talking we, to us for yeah. a minute. I appreciate y'all's business. Uh -huh, absolutely. Thank you. Yes, sir. Come on, fellas. Pouring room where they're making all the forms, got everything in foam and the, and the forms locked together, clamped together. Really awesome. That's what it looks like before it makes it to the house. That's where they're cleaning up everything after they. Well, once they take them out of the molds, then they come through here and. Um, 
Logan and Lisa and Lex, whoever's working over here, clean them and get them ready. Shit. They wrap, wrap the faces, heads. get ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long does it take for them to dry? About an hour. About an hour and they're done? Well, it depends. It maybe. Depending on how big it is, call it humidity. humidity. That's right. That's, That's pretty impressive. I figured it would take a lot longer than that. Yeah. Some, Look at all of them. Some of the great old big ones there, 24, 25, 6. Some, you know, like I say, depending on the weather and stuff, it may take a little longer. That's right. Yeah, a lot of them at one time, don't they? You know, all the plaques, all the backs of them up there on the wall. Really cool. Have a, each one has their own size mattress with it. Right. Fit on the back. Yeah, that is me that first time I ever seen I this done. I was wondering before. how how it was done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you have never seen it, it's for some it's kind of hard to imagine. It would be for me. Right. Man. Ben does all the sculpting and... What he's sculpted in there right now is to make those. But how do you make... That's fiberglass. Exactly. He'll, yeah, he'll, he'll make that form. He's carving that in there. And then they'll make that to go on the outside of it, take that off, and then they pour foam into that to make what he's sculpted. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Hey, how are you? I'm all right. And you, I'm Christy. I'm liking. Nice oh, to meet y'all. She's filming. If that's okay. Yeah. We no, were... that's fine. <laughs> that that is fine. I don't know what I'm, I'm filming, but <laughs> yes, that that's fine. Um, those are y'all's, and I've got your stuff in here. We can I can help y'all on those. Okay. I'll get the car for you. Okay. I'm gonna grab your camera. How many we got left? Three. Three more? It's gonna get tight, but we're gonna make it. Hold that. This is the last one. <laughs> it's gonna get tight, but we're gonna make it. Right. <laughs> People are gonna wonder what we got <laughs> in our van yeah. going on down the road. So we know we can fit 15. <laughs> and four replacement. And four replacement heads. And probably could have fit another four replacement I heads in the get, other side. Well, we could have got more replacement heads, but I think we could get another four forms in here. Right. Maybe. Sweet. All right. <laughs> Good. It's Neat learning how they do them. Yeah, I know that was pretty cool. Y'all check this out. <clears throat> we got us some sweet merch. Look here. Team mirrors. Yes, yes. I got it in the green. Didn't even know he had shirts. But he does. So we went ahead and grabbed some. Now we're gonna drive all the way back to Coleman. And all unload, our deer. unload all of our children. We have a lot of our kids right in the back here. <laughs> I knew we needed an SUV. 